Brett and, um, or Brittany. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So, this whole week, like, I'm feeling really good today because this whole week I have had, like, this awful cold. And today I'm actually, I'm feeling really good. And I'm so happy to feel good. And I think I caught my cold from William Shatner. And I know that sounds like really weird to be like excited about, but I shouldn't say I'm excited, but I really think I caught this cold from William Shatner when I met him a week ago, because <laughs> he was sick and uh, I hugged him and I think I caught it, so Shatner gave me this cold. <laughs> but today's video, guys, I'm just happy to be feeling better, but if you see me drinking some water in between, you know why, but I might just cut it out because, you know. But we're gonna be talking about another creepy legend from Japan. Honestly, what is up with Japan and these creepy stories? I think it's awesome, it's so awesome. This story is called Red Robe and I, I wore red on purpose because you guys know I like to add little touches to stories, you know, on myself, like wearing the colors or like anything that goes on in the story I like to kind of wear on myself. But I don't have a red robe. I have a red coat, but I wore that for my other, my red coat video or that urban legend. Oh my God, I forget what it's called. That guy in the bathroom, red coat or blue coat. Or no, I don't even remember what he says. My memory is just, I don't even know. <laughs> it was called red cloak. Sorry, red cloak. So I wasn't gonna wear that today. So this is like, I don't own anything red. So of course it just pulled out my Michael Jackson shirt because hi. Mm -mm. Let's get right on into the story. So this is a story, a creepy legend from Japan. It's about this girl that checks into this really creepy hotel and then she encounters, has this crazy encounter with this really creepy woman. So this girl, she was traveling and she wanted to make her trip kind of cheap. She didn't want to spend so much money. So she stayed in this really cheap hotel. When she checked into this hotel, she realized that her room number was room 66 on the sixth floor so you know a chill went down her spine because she put the 666 together and was like holy crap this is 666 the devil's number this sounds like a story like a true story that would happen to me but it, instead of 666 it'd be 444 which actually did happen to me <laughs> So she kind of just, you know, brushed it off and she started unpacking her things. So when she was unpacking her things, she heard a knock at the door. So she was like, all right, this is kind of weird. So she went to the door, she opened it, but nobody was there. She peeked her head out, you know, looking around like, what the heck? Who was that who just knocked on my door? But she didn't see anybody. So she was like, you know, maybe it's my imagination. I was thinking about 666. That kind of freaked me out. Now I'm starting to hear things. So she closed the door. She went back inside her room and continued unpacking. Suddenly, there was another knock at the door. So she was like, what the heck? Like, who is doing this? Is it some prank? Like, what is it? So she opened the door and she saw a woman standing there in a red robe, like a red bathrobe. The woman was kind of giving her strange vibes because she was crying and shaking and she was all upset because she locked herself outside of her room and you know like if somebody told me that I'd be like why don't you just go back downstairs and get another key like you know what I mean but anyways I'm not in this story of course but like if I was you know living this and someone came to my room saying I locked myself out I would be like oh well like do you want me to walk down with you to get another key which is what this girl did too but that's just what I would say or I would be like why don't you just like why didn't you think about going downstairs to get another key because that's happened to me before my key just like stopped working so I was locked out of my room and I went back downstairs and I was like I'm locked outside of my room like I need another key and they give it to you so like I don't, I don't really understand <laughs> so the girl was listening to this woman and the woman was saying that she she was really depressed and that she's going through some hard times with her husband and she's feeling really suicidal and depressed. So the girl just listened to her and she was like, you know, do you want me to go down to the lobby with you to get another key? Because she felt really bad for her and the woman, you know, she was she was crying, she was upset. And now, like, getting back, if I was in the story, like, I'd be like, what, where is your husband? He's in there, like, or is he beating you up or something? Honestly, like I would be concerned about if he's been abusing her or something, because why is she crying and shaking? Why is she locked outside? You know what I mean? I would be asking her, is he in that room? I'd be kind of scared. I don't know, I don't trust anybody these days, and I just think like people are like out to get me all the time, so. I don't know, it could be a setup as well, but anyways. So the woman and the girl, they took the elevator down together to the lobby to get another key. When they went down there, it was completely empty. 
Nobody was there. She thought it was really weird, so she started ringing the bell and waiting for the receptionist to come, but she never came. She did come eventually a few minutes later, and she's just like, you know, like, where were you? <laughs> so the girl said to her, I just need a replacement key because the woman in the red robe, she she's locked outside of her room. She needs another key to get inside of her room. The receptionist, she looked pretty terrified, and she looked at the girl and said, the woman in the red robe? What woman in the red robe? And the girl was like, oh, this poor woman, you know, she came into my room, she knocked on my door, she said she's having hard times with her husband, and she was locked outside of her room, and she's depressed, and she just needs another key, so I thought I would come down with her to get the key. And if you guys are wondering, yes, the woman disappeared at this point, I don't know what happened to her, because the receptionist and the girl, they were talking as if she wasn't even there, so obviously she wasn't there. And because the receptionist said, what woman in the red robe? You know what I mean? <laughs> so she wasn't there. She just disappeared when they went down to the lobby. So the receptionist, she was so confused and she just kept saying to the girl, what are you talking about? You are the only person that is staying on the sixth floor. The girl started to get a little creeped out and she's like, that can't be. I'm not the only person. This woman, she's staying on my floor. She came to my door. She's locked out of her room. So the receptionist was like, you know, you may not believe this, but there was a tragedy here a few years ago so the girl was like a tragedy a few years ago like what like I just want to unpack my stuff like what is going on the receptionist told her that a few years ago a woman was staying in this hotel on the sixth floor in the 66th room the same room that that girl is staying in so the woman years ago she was having hard times with her husband and she was feeling very suicidal but in her madness she didn't just want to kill herself she wanted to kill everybody in that hotel. She was absolutely insane. So what she did was she put on a white bathrobe and carried around a shotgun, went from floor to floor shooting at everybody, killing everybody in the hotel. She was absolutely insane that her white robe that she was wearing was so bloody that it looked like she was wearing an actual red robe instead of a white robe. That's how much blood there was. Ever since that day, many guests that have stayed on the sixth floor have said that they have seen this woman. This girl was speechless. She could not believe what the receptionist was telling her. She was thinking in her head, there is no way, like this was a real person. But then also she disappeared. Like, where did she go? She was supposed to come down to the lobby with her and she never came. And then the receptionist, she smiled at the girl. She walked around her desk and pointed to her stomach, a red stain on her stomach. Then the receptionist said, see, this is where she shot me. So it's just like, I mean, I don't know what happened after that. When I tell these stories or when I read them before I tell them, I picture everything in my head and it's just horrifying, the image in my head, what this woman looks like, her white robe that's now red because it's just people's blood all over her, how she went insane. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this really creepy story. I think it's absolutely terrifying and like I just, you know, like I said, I pictured the whole thing as I'm telling it to you guys as I was reading it before I filmed this and actually I read it last night but then like I was like I'm gonna film this tomorrow because <laughs> I wasn't feeling good. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you rock my world the song lyrics of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. You guys know it. <laughs> hashtag team Brady44. Hashtag Barilla Reds. Hey! And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!